do you spell your name in Dominican? Like when they write Sometimes right name, it's J E U D Y. My name is Justin. This is Judy. They call me yeah. Justin. So J O S T I N G. Justin. 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 <laughs> it becomes a verb. <laughs> What's up, people? Welcome back to The Changeover. I'm Justin Roberts. Got to my right, Jordan McGinley and Evan Zhu. We are at home today. Don't do that ever again. I'm not on my podcast. <laughs> uh, we are in Pompano Beach at home today. And yes, don't forget, we have a deal with Pro Stringer. Use our code CHANGEOVER at the checkout on the website and get $100 off a machine. Great machine. You can use it at home, on the road. Saves you a bunch of money. And... What's happening with the camera? You didn't see that? No. We're good? All right. So basically, great machine. Use our code. Get money off. And yes, thanks for the support. We recently reached 1,000 subscribers. Clap it up for yourself. Well done. No enthusiasm. Uh, we appreciate all the support you guys have given us through the last eight months. It's been a lot of fun. We've learned a lot from recording for 40 minutes and cameras dying and having to start all the way over. Uh... Yeah, not being prepared for episodes like tonight, so I'm still learning. Uh, but um, yeah, still been, working on the audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. We have qualified to make money now. We made about what is it like seven dollars and fifty cents, something like that, for the last four or five days. So <laughs> we're on our way to being rich from this thing. Uh, but all in all, um, it's just really been a, a fun journey so far, and we have a lot of cool stuff planned coming up. And also, don't forget. We still have merch, so you see that shirt. We got a pink hoodie, a white hoodie, pullover, and yeah. I we think had, that's uh, about it. We had some comments, actually, from someone. I can't remember who it was, what the name of the person was, but they they basically told us that maybe to make the link more accessible. So for those of you who don't know how you can support, um, go in the description below on the YouTube video. You'll see the, the merch link there. We have it there. And then also on the link tree on uh, our Instagram. on Instagram and one other social medias too, Twitter, Facebook. But obviously Instagram is the one that has the the biggest audience. So yeah, you can go to any of those um, social medias and support us. But also click the link, um, purchase a pro stringer. And obviously, with us now being a thousand, having a thousand subs on YouTube, we get you know some help from from YouTube too, depending on the views. So. Um, yeah, thanks again. As Justin said, we, you know, it's it's kind of cool to know that people actually spend money to purchase a T-shirt with a bench and a tennis racket that my sister designed because we come and talk on a camera, you know. Yeah. So the concept of it um, is kind of cool. Obviously, that's what we wanted in the very beginning is to, to be a successful podcast. But then now that we actually have some kind of momentum, it's still a cool feeling. Like Justin says it every now and again to us in private that like, just sitting down and reflecting on how people actually come and tune in to listen to what we have to say um, is special. So so mm-hmm. thank you so far for us. And anyone who we've seen in person and said and showed some love, we appreciate that too. I'm not the best in terms of social interactions, I feel like. I could be a little bit short, but really do appreciate it. And yeah, we look forward to bringing you guys some more, some more cool stuff uh, coming up in the near future. Yeah. We want to send uh, an August winner road to what, maybe 5K? That's another, the next goal over. So... For you guys watching, this was like maybe five months ago. <laughs> we were talking and we were like, we thought we were doing pretty good in the summer last year. We thought we had some things figured out. We we're like, okay, you know, we finally got everything sorted out. Now we know how to use the equipment, all this stuff. So we we're like, oh, like trying to predict how many subs we'll yeah, have. We said by October 13th, we would have 5K on Instagram and 1K on, on uh, YouTube. And we about what? Five months late, so <laughs> we're we still not five. We haven't even hit the Instagram still yet. Still not five on Instagram, so it's a work in progress. But it is. I will say though, it is kind of cool because I I felt personally that we had a lot of pressure to get to the a thousand, and now that we're here, I feel like it's kind of a reset. How we can like refocus on the reason why we actually started to do it, and not have to worry so much about the the growth because. Also, what you guys will find out this episode, as you know, later on we'll have some stuff to talk about. But like, it could be a good time for us to to reach a new audience and that sort of stuff. So, if we just, you know, focus on doing what we what we've learned how to do pretty good by now, then then we'll be successful. We don't have to worry about the views and all this sort of stuff. Sure. So, 
But um, enough about us. And we have a, a shout out to a good friend of ours. Uh, I guess a loyal supporter of the podcast. Apparently he watches every episode. Yeah. Our friend Aiden, Aiden Gomez from, from Curacao. Yeah, shout out to Aiden. Just got his first ATP point at the Dominican 25K. He won today. And I think it's been a long time, a long time coming for him. He's been with me on the road, I think, a few times. And then we were together last summer in, in Holland. And he was struggling with his form. And we were having some talks about how he could improve, what he could do differently. So the hair that he's finally got his first ATP point is, uh, I'm happy to hear that. And yeah. uh, congrats, bro. Yeah, I know he he talked to me about his recent results and futures and stuff. And obviously the beginning of the year is always tough. So, mm. you know, he said he had some decent opportunities and also some rough draws. But he felt like in training a lot of the time he was playing well and playing, having good scores in practice against good players ranked, you know, in, inside a thousand, like 800, 700, whatever. So, it was only a matter of time where he put in a performance in, in, a, in a future where, you know, it matters and where he can get, you know, some, I guess, gratification from the actual work he's putting in. So hopefully um, he can keep the run going and, and push on. It's another Caribbean player that, you know, is in the system now. So that's, that's always good for Caribbean players. So shout out to Aiden. Good job. Yeah, well, congrats. So we're going to start with a quick game. You can play long at home. It's just going to be guest to player. I'm going to give you facts about them and their career and the first person they guess it wins and you can guess whenever you want but once you guess I get to read the rest of the clues out and the other person gets to guess before you guess again and then if we go through all those clues I have a few more clues at the end that will make it even more obvious and then again you get to guess you'll need like 20 clues <laughs> yeah, but we're not gonna do one round today it's just us in the on this episode so we're gonna make it quick but are you guys ready all right. Mm -hmm. All right. This player. Sabla go. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this player plays smooth as a big forehand. Went to the University of South Carolina for one season. Steve Johnson. No. South, South Carolina, oh, brother. South Carolina. Oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, I lose. Evan, yeah, rest, yeah, rest yeah. the green up for you. I know who it is. I know who it is. South Carolina. He was very successful in the Challenger circuit. He has a brother who's also a professional tennis player who won an ATP title before he did. His brother is also was also at one point top 100. Huh? His first big run on the ATP tour was at the Miami Open. Give him easier guesses. Give him easier clues. University of South Carolina. South California. South Carolina. <laughs> Why did I the last clue? so quick, bro? No, that's enough clues, actually. That's, that's enough clues. clues. That's enough clues. It's Gamecocks. Gamecocks. Paul he, older... Paul he has a sure. brother. He has a brother. No, no, you're not supposed to be able to redo all the stuff. You already told him everything he needs to know. I'm just clarifying the clue that he was trying to I win this. Come on. You're just praying on my downfall. Um, smooth player. Big... Well, if he doesn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know it. <laughs> a brother that won an ATP title before he did? Yes. Oh, I'm gonna give you ten seconds. Serendula. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know it. <laughs> Why did I get Steve Johnson? That's crazy. Uh, Carolina got me quick. <laughs> was that two dubs in a row? Yeah. Jeez. That other one was a technicality. Though. Last episode was a technicality. You last were technically last already. Last question's always more points. But you already lost Every the game. Every game, last question is, are, are always You went one for five. <laughs> <laughs> one for six. And then he, had, then he had good mathematical skills. You know why. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically cheating, actually, if you think about it. <laughs> Should have never let... I'm cheating. Well, wow. I'm more cutthroat now in the game. Now I'm not letting Evan in. Like, if Evan's already lost, that's it. Evan can't play that. Oh, but it's more fun that way, though. Last question is more points. But I have set up, like... Last question is more points for those who are still in the game. But I have set up, like, different kinds of last questions, too. Like, not all math, like, different... It'll be fun. <laughs> It'll be fun. Okay, okay. So we're going to do a little catch-up now. Evan, how's life? It's okay. <laughs> um, back from my injury, I'm practicing... wife, kids? You know? The wife, <laughs> I miss them dearly. Uh, <laughs> KT take boss. We're going to yeah. show enough that he's hurt. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
It works, Katie. He's actually, he's actually matching his open to his tape. You, you know what is that? Evan's always see that. He has a blue on the app. Does it work, words. KT Tape? Uh, yes, please sponsor us, KT Tape. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, really? I think it works a little, even if it's placebo. But um, yeah, I'm getting close to 100%. I've been practicing. I've been moving. Um, hopefully, I'll be back to tournaments in like two weeks. A little less than two weeks. Right. Yeah, Let's go. Uh, myself, uh, I've been here for the last, I feel like, almost two months. I hit today, and by the time this comes out, it would already been passed, but I would go to the doctor tomorrow because I still had pain in the hand, especially on the forehand side. So if I go to the doctor tomorrow, we have a little solution for that. Um, but I've just been working with a fitness coach here, working really hard in the gym. And I've been uh, I've been meditating and visualizing, trying to stay as sharp as I can with the with the tennis and try to get better as sharp as you can without hitting one tennis ball. Yeah, yeah. trying to trying to get better somehow. Uh, have you read any books recently? I have not been reading books, but I have been yeah spending time in the watching podcasts. I got quite a few human men and stuff like that, trying to just maybe become a better better person. I guess I guess I feel like. If you can improve as a human, maybe you can perform better. Maybe I can handle things better or have better strategies to, to deal with certain things. Um, but, yeah, the meditation has been good as well. I have a funny, I don't know if it's a funny story, but I, I want to know if this would surprise Jody. So I had, like, this routine where I wake up in the morning and I would go over to the to the bench here in the, in the complex that we live at, and I meditate there. I would do my thing. And then one morning I go out there and I... And I see my headphones on the bench, and they soak like because it's been raining some of those days. Do you leave it from the day before? Exactly. Does that surprise you or no? No, not at all. So, <laughs> so I've been. So normally, if you know me, if you see me at home or anything, I'm always in my headphones, uh, listening to music or a podcast or something. So the last week, I've been in the gym with no headphones, and you know, oh, you didn't know where it was. Oh, because, because they're not working. They, they don't work. work. Oh, okay, okay. So I've been at Bowers at the gym that, that I do the fitness at, and they play all kinds of music in there. You can go in there, and it's right up your alley. It could be some Afro beats, some hip hop, or you go in there, it could be like some, or it could be like <laughs> country music. You know what I mean? So, and on Friday, Friday is like for me the toughest day because Friday they have a country day. So they play country music That's from all day Friday from six a.m. until. <laughs> So I go in there on Friday, and I'm, like, upset, listening to country music. And I come to realization that I just might be a bit of a hater. Because come Monday morning, it was like a mix. It was some rap, some country, some whatever. And they playing some country music. And I find myself, stop, like... Stop that I right find now. my... I'm not going to lie to you. right now. I find myself, like... like Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> like Justin, gotcha. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that is that I like the genre, but but there are some. It's not. I always say like I hate country music, but I can't say I hate it anymore. Uh, like like it's not bad. Music. They have some some good music, some funny, some good lyrics. So I cannot. I can no longer hate on country music. I can no longer do it. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. I have to admit that. You? You like country music? I'm, I don't listen to it that much, but yeah, I like some country songs. There's plenty of heat in there, boy. Like, I was mad one day, but I found myself, like, randomly, like, I'll oh, stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> don't you tell me? I, 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 I talk way too much shit about you country music. You can't be dancing to this shit, bro. <laughs> First time I cross on the podcast where you got to yeah. edit it off me, Reese. My mom listens to this. You're getting too comfortable. Yeah, I have that. But I, I, I was, I got beside myself in the gym, and I felt a little embarrassed, but I have to admit that. It's not that bad. Country music got on cursing. I would come. Yeah. This man's acting out of character. Yeah. Yo, so if there's any doctors watching this, please help my dog. Out. Get him on the test, but he's going crazy. Yeah, bro. He's liking country music. Country you music. know, I don't understand. I don't understand. So, yeah. Hey, yeah, you. My update? Yeah. Um, two weeks in Dominican. I felt like my preparation for doubles wasn't ideal because I played singles mm. and I played singles and I played qualies and the first two rounds of qualies were pretty light but the conditions are obviously brutal like it's hot and humid so 
if I spend an hour to an hour and a half on the court, um, oh, if I spend an hour, hour and a half on the court playing a singles match, I don't really want to hit the court again and, and do some doubles reps. Um, especially like thinking about my body. So I feel like Sunday we had the singles match. Mon- no, su- yeah, Sunday singles match, Monday singles match. And then I played Fenty last round qualies and that was a tough match. We played for like almost two hours. And then I played doubles the next day. We won a round and then lost two the two seeds who ended up winning it in three sets. So close match, good quality. I, I was pretty happy with the level. Then I did the same thing the next week. So I took one day off and I was hoping to get to buy in qualies and the draw was full. And so I did the same thing again where I played a singles match, which I felt like, again, like not the best preparation for doubles. So I played a singles match and the next day I played the singles and doubles and... Um. Yeah, I lost in three in that one to Aiden. Uh, did I say it in this episode in the beginning of this, or was that the that was the last? Yeah. Time. So Aiden uh, and his partner took us out yesterday, and they started very hot. Um, pretty aggressive. Broke me in the second game of the match, and then second set we we won the second. We made some adjustments, Peter and I, and then we were up seven four in the tie break and didn't close it out that well. Uh, obviously, not with another point in the time break. It's not the best way to <laughs> Ten go. Seven. Yeah, but um, but again, it's a learning experience. Like I learned a few things. Like, um, luckily Ricardo Rodriguez watched the match on live stream because mm-hmm. obviously it's not that easy for my coach to always watch. And obviously, how I feel in the match is not necessarily what always happens. Mm-hmm. So Ricardo watched and he was able to give me some feedback, which I agree with. So pretty much, it's like I need to be more aware of some things earlier and try to step in and change you know so like tactically tactically yeah, yeah exactly so Aiden and his partner did something in the first um that I didn't really address and so we went down a break early but then we we're on serve for two three games like I mean held serve for two three games and then they broke us again at the end of the set so if we maybe made some adjustments maybe we can put some more pressure on them and try to get back the break early in the set but we didn't make an adjustment did you see it or you just didn't I it saw it I saw it so basically what was happening was I played the first week against Mejia and Urea, and they both return. Like Mejia returns really well, Urea not so much, but regardless, the returns are coming like through the court. So even if Urea misses returns, it's still coming through. Um, and I felt like sometimes I got caught like too far behind the net when Peter served, when my partner served. And so I was like, okay, the adjustment that I wanted to make was that I be tied to the net so I can pick off you know, pick off any floaters or like if I have to hit a volley that's low, I'm close to that, I can just angle it to the side versus if I'm a step or two back, if it comes over that, it's dropping still, it's a tougher volley. So I started pretty tight to the net yesterday and the guys yesterday just floated returns. Like they hit float like lobs kind of. And it was like, I asked Peter one or two times if those are mine, you know, because they were floating it either over me or like through the middle. And I wasn't quite sure if there was mine because I was not aware. I was like, I don't know if if I should be trying to step back and take one out the air. Maybe that takes away that play from them. Maybe now they try to hit some more and make some more mistakes. But I, when I asked Peter that, he felt like he was trying to take the responsibility himself. Like he was saying no. Like, no, that's me. It's it me. Because, right. Exactly. Because he was saying like, it's not a t- difficult ball for him. It's like a, it's just like a, someone hand feeds a ball that's relatively deep. Like he should make that ball all day long. But like what they were doing was they would push it long and then they both come in. I know they're both at the net. Peter's hitting a ground stroke, and I'm in the middle. You know, so um, yeah, that was one of the adjustments that I that I could have made. Maybe it was just take that play out of the game for them early, and then another one was that uh, maybe mix up the the serves and the plays, especially on the ad court. Returning yesterday, he was returning very well, aggressive. So that's one of the things we did in the second was like try to keep the first serve percentage high, hit some kick serves, and that sort of stuff, and. Um, we made that adjustment, won the second set 6-2. And then in the third, we we went down a mini break early, came back, and then we were up 7-4. Peter played a good point, put a few lobs up. Then it came to me, and I didn't put a good lob up, but I, I missed it. And then 7-5 missed the return, 7-6. I hit a good kick serve to the guy. Peter missed a sitter. 7 all I doubled. Like just very quick, it just went the other way. So another adjustment that I thought that I could have made was after Peter missed the seven six sitter on my serve, now I need to realize okay, momentum's gone. 
um, take my time a little bit more, be deliberate. Instead, I was thinking just to be calm, like just to be on phase and just step mm-hmm. up to the line and be on phase about it. And I, I missed the first serve. The ball rolled to the side. Peter took two, three seconds to step aside, move the ball, come back, and now I get iced a little bit. Miss a second. Obviously, in the moment, the the momentum's going against me, and I feel pressure. So that's another thing. It's just like learn to take my time a little bit more, play the match, and not necessarily just dismiss the feelings sometimes. Mm-hmm. So. But it was good, like uh, another learning experience. And I feel like overall the level was pretty good. Like they, we didn't lose the first set because we were playing poorly. Like these guys played a good set. Well. Aiden was moving pretty well at the net. Like there were times where I was surprised. Like um, obviously Aiden trains w- part time with uh, John Julian Roya. So top, I don't know what he is, top 15, top 20 doubles guy pretty much his whole career. So Aiden's going to learn a few things. And there were times where I was surprised. Like they would like do a play where Aiden's at the net I'm returning and Aiden's not supposed to move but the second that I put the ball in the middle Aiden's across putting the ball away you know like maybe if I go hard at him then he would make some mistakes but if it was him being proactive he won the point almost every time so it was uh yeah I thought it was decent quality the whole way besides a little bit of tension in the third the quality was good so Mm -hmm. yeah on to the next I guess that's doubles I was always trying not to let it phase me too much and let's keep going. So, but I heard you had another little something on your mind about the. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm talking a lot this episode and I didn't expect to. So, basically, right? And I was supposed to actually do research about this. So, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure you know by now I'm from the Caribbean and we don't have that many opportunities, playing opportunities. So, with that being said, it's like we have Dominican Republic is in our region. It's the Kotec region, right? So we have the, I, I believe Kotec is all of the islands in the Caribbean. Um, that's it, right? There's no Central American teams and no South American teams. It's just it's just all the countries in the Caribbean is Kotec, I believe. No, it's Caribbean, Central America. But they have COSAT. What's COSAT? That's South America. So Central America is also a part. Yeah. Okay. So in the Caribbean for futures... All we have is Dominican Republic. Mexico. Mexico, which they used to have a bunch in Cancun. They don't anymore. Now they just have them sprinkled throughout the year. And then in occasion, they would have like Trinidad. Which had last year. Yeah, yeah. And Jamaica's supposed to have this year. So. And I'm going to send this once this comes out to to Kotex so they see that we're talking about this. But pretty much the way I feel is that if you go and look at the futures list, you go to Brazil. And you look at the futures list and you look at the, the wild cards that they... They're Brazilian. They're Brazilian. <laughs> if you look in the Italy, US... The Italian. They, yeah. It, yeah, exactly. So yeah. these countries... So in every tournament, there's four wild cards. And primarily, the countries look out for their own. But there's an occasion where they will have like a wild card tournament so that the winner of the wild card tournament gets to play in the main draw or in the qualifying draw. But that's based on merit. You know, whoever goes and wins the tournament gets the... The wild card, but primarily the country that hosts the the tournament director, they decide and they pretty much look out for their own. So to me, it's very disappointing that the Caribbean has very few opportunities. And then I don't know the politics behind it. I don't know who like of the four wild cards. I don't know if all four goes to the federation of a, of an event. I don't know if three goes and then one goes to the Kotec region. I don't know exactly how it works, but I just think that it's disappointing that we show up to, it's the first two tournaments of the year in the Caribbean and the four wild cards is one Dominican guy and Aiden, who's from the Caribbean, and then you have an English guy and a Brazilian guy. And obviously, like I said, I don't know the decisions that go into it, but it's disappointing sitting in the Caribbean as a Caribbean player and seeing myself, Ricardo from Venezuela. I don't know if he's in Kotec or, or Cosat or whatever. Sure. Zavi, like the and and this is not the only time this has happened. It's obviously happened in the past. Um, but it's just disappointing that we already have very few tournaments and our region doesn't do a good enough job at giving us opportunities. Because give Aiden for example. Aiden got a wild card. He's from the Caribbean. Curacao doesn't have pro tournaments. So I'm I'm very happy that he got a wild card into mm-hmm. 
Santo Domingo and he won a round today. Pero, he got so, a, he got a point. Well so, done. Yeah. What would have happened if Aiden had to play qualies? He would have been in qualies. He's not seated. He would have to play two seats. So that's probably two guys that have points above him. Let's say even if he does do a good job and qualify, it's three matches in tough conditions and he's playing main draw. You don't know. You know what I mean? So that's, to me, like, I love that, that Aiden got the opportunity and, and can go and play, you know? So I just think this disappoints. And to the Jamaica Federation, you guys have futures coming up. Please, like, give it to Caribbean players. Like, I don't know. However you guys want to do it, if you want to do, you know, wildcard tournaments or if the Federation picks whoever, but, like, please do not allow countries that have a million opportunities to come in and take away the little opportunities that we have for ourselves. You know what I mean? Like, the Jamaica Ten Tennis Federation probably has worked hard um, off of the results of the pros that we've had, like Blaze and Randy and John and other players who are doing well recently. So please, if you guys are... Uh, you know, thinking about how you would distribute the wild cards that are about to come up. Don't let Blaze and Randy and John, don't let their work go to waste. You know, all the work that they've done to put Tennis Jamaica on the map now, give it back to, to people from the Caribbean, people from Jamaica who don't have the opportunities. Don't let people that come in that have opportunities on their own because I can tell you this for sure. If I go to Brazil and ask for a wild card, they don't even answer my email. I mean, I, I know like... You know, there are places that have a bunch of tournaments throughout the year, like Egypt and Tunisia and previously Cancun and stuff. And a part of their business model is that, you know, people come in and stay at the hotel for weeks. And then that way they, you know, there's like some sort of a, a, a deal, you know, mm -hmm. like if you're staying there for a while or whatever, in good faith, they can try and help Take you out the hotel. Yeah. So I don't know if that was the case in Santo Domingo, but I just wish that, you know, People like myself and Xavi and, and you and Ricardo and all these people, we've been going to Dominican Republic since we were 15, 16 years old playing junior tournaments, you know? 12, 13. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so and, and, and I don't even know, I don't want to point fingers, you know? I'm not saying that it's one person's fault or the other person's fault, but I just believe that there needs to be some sort of system in place that looks after our own because there's no way that we have players that have been doing this for years and working hard and that sort of stuff and then they come in and they see other people getting opportunities ahead of us because mm -hmm. I don't even know why, you know, net networking or whatever. So that's what I would hope. Jamaica, if 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 you have any takeaway from this, please just support support our own. So. Yeah, I don't have much to add. I agree with the sentiment that you. <laughs> what is that? What is that? That sign you're throwing up? What's the name of the guy? Uh, uh, ske sketch. Sketch. I just saw him <laughs> YouTube. I just saw him today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, I think. That's another cool part about having this this podcast as a as an outlet, as a platform to speak on. I know it's not always positive. We've heard a story or two get back to us that something that someone said in the podcast wasn't taken well by other people. But yeah. it's but it's nice to have a voice that can reach, you know. Uh hopefully they they, they hear your words and they take it they take them seriously. Um but yeah, I agree with everything you had to say about uh about that topic. It's, it's tough because I I know that there are people in Santo Domingo that care. So, like, for example, like I said, I've been going to the Dominican Republic since I was I was young. So all of the people who are there, like the lunch people, the the people who give out the balls and practice courts. They can't the spell my name, but they know me. No, they know me. And, and, <laughs> like, I can tell that I'm, I'm cared for personally as a person who's been there for a long time because... You know, they try to help me out and give me better balls mm -hmm. when they can. Or like, for example, Jimmy, the supervisor. I mean, I played the first two matches on court two. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to go all the way down to the bottom courts. And then he scheduled me the third match on the third day on stadium court. And I lost the match. And later that day, I saw him and he was like, like I, because it was close, you know, and he was like, oh, I thought you had him there. Like, good try. Um, I put you on stadium because I know you've played there a bunch, bunch in the past and I thought that you'd have a good chance on stadium. Like, he did it because he thought that I was, you know what I mean? So, like, I can tell that there are people there who actually genuinely care, but then I don't know what goes on behind the scenes when it goes to decision making because there were re there were rumors about other wild cards and who was going to get in that sort of stuff. And I was like, I personally would have preferred to not have to play qualities and singles, but I'm sure all of the audience knows I'm focused on doubles, so I don't care if I don't get one. Mm. But, like, what I care about is that other Caribbean people 
like Aiden gets opportunities. Mm-hmm. You know, like Aiden deserves one. Aiden goes to almost all of the Dominican tournaments every time they're on the calendar. Aiden's there. Aiden's staying at the hotel, like supporting the 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 economy of of Dominican Republic. So like Aiden deserves it. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I think that there are other players in the Caribbean, and and I don't even know how many players we have these days. But like, it just needs to go back to Caribbean players. It just needs to give our own opportunities. Like in Trinidad. They give Trinidadians wild cards. That's how it's supposed to be, you know? Makes sense. Yeah. How do you spell your name in Dominica? Like when they were... Sometimes it's in- J-E-U-D-Y. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Justin. <laughs> this is Judy. They call me yeah. Justin. So J-O-S-T-I-N-G. <laughs> Justin. Justin. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> it becomes a verb. <laughs> that's funny. We got anything else or we got around uh, Um... Why don't we, so that's the end of my rant. Sorry, people. That's the end of that. <laughs> Why don't we talk about what's coming up next week is oh, yes. Miami Open. Miami Open. Yeah, Got some big things brewing. Yeah, so this this week kind of got a little bit messed up because obviously I was hoping to be in Dominican Republic and this was supposed to be a Zoom episode, but Aiden had other plans. And no, no, uh, Aiden. <laughs> and I'm here now, so we have this recording tonight. But next week we will be recording with a few pros, so... Pros. Top, a few top 100 top players, pros, top yeah. 50 players. So yeah. we're trying to step up the... Not that every guest is a human and they're all important, but for what we're trying to do... <laughs> <laughs> but we're, and everybody's just a person. Yeah, but, right. But, but, um, but yeah, I think it's good to learn from people at every level. So I think we've spoken to college players, futures players, challenger players, and now... It would be cool to talk to some people who have had some some big results at the at the biggest stages of this of this game, to learn even more and and have some fun with them as well and play some games and have some uh, see them in different lights than you see them on on tennis TV or tennis channel. So I think uh, yeah, it could be could be a, a good time for everybody involved here at the at the park as we worked pretty hard the last eight months. So it was kind of cool to see that our work is kind of paying off and we're reaching some. People we didn't know might even like it. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's funny because when, when we first started it, we thought that we could just... The idea was that, oh, we sit, at, we sit in front of microphones and we do what we normally do anyway. Mm. But we learned that that's not really the case because no. it's actually... Like we need to learn how to talk to cameras. You feel not. you feel the lights and you feel the camera. Like <laughs> yeah. <it's> not- <laughs> yeah. So so I actually I genuinely believe now that we we are we've improved enough to where we can handle yeah. a more high pressure situation where yeah. you know if we're sitting on here with our friends we can make some mistakes. Start over three times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but if we have these people who we know is the middle of Miami Open and we don't want to keep them too long and they have an hour and a half of time, we have to get it done. You know? Yeah. Exactly. So. So yeah, so it, it's it's cool that we feel like we're in the position where we can actually pull something like this off. And then mm-hmm. obviously we've done decently well enough to where these people would want to come on. Obviously they wouldn't want to come on if we were doing a horrible job. So they probably have seen a little bit of what we do and it's it's decent. So so yeah, obviously, yeah, I was going to say something crazy. But... <laughs> Should I say what happened to me in the gym the other day? <laughs> All right, so I was approached by a, by a tennis player, like good tennis player, the other day in the gym. And uh, this this player has been as high as I want to say like 120 in the world, and apparently we go to the same gym. And he came up, came up to me, was like, "Hey, bro, what's good? Whatever, whatever." He went about his workout, and then he came back five minutes later to tell me that he liked the podcast. He was saying he likes different personalities on the podcast. He thinks that that is funny. Then it's also interesting to get to learn some stuff. We ask good questions. And he said, obviously, it'll never be huge, but you guys will do a good job, so why not? <laughs> so like, that's a crazy backhanded compliment. But um, I appreciate the support, and I think um, hopefully we get to prove him wrong. Yeah. In, I mean, the good news like, is that he actually likes the podcast, so yeah. we're actually doing something good. The funny part to me is that if you like it, why wouldn't somebody else like it? Like, yeah. you know? <laughs> but I probably think that he probably thinks that, but maybe mm-hmm. in, in his defense, like to play devil's advocate, because I thought it was hilarious, but to yeah. play devil's advocate, <laughs> tennis is like, pretty it's like niche. small niche yeah, yeah. yeah so so maybe that's what he felt like maybe if we get good it's only so good that we can be yeah. but what he don't know is that tennis ain't the only sport so we can yeah. just do other sports yeah. and we can have other people oh that's another thing actually in Dominican I spoke to Temba who is one of the owners of One Tennis Academy he also watches all of our episodes a shout out to Temba um, Temba I was surprised that he 
because I asked him, like, I and I asked him, like, do you actually watch the episode episodes? Do you just watch like some of the clips? He said, I watch everything. And he was saying that we should have other people on, not just players. That like, we should try to get agents and coaches and and this. Kind we of spoke stuff, about that so. for a while. Like we were trying to get like maybe someone from the ATP to come talk to us. Yeah, and... I still think we should. Like it'll be and and that's what he said at the time. The ATP supervisor that I wanted to have on, he said that let let's grow a little bit first. Let's get a little bit better, and then when we know that we can do something properly, we do it. So I think we're there now. Like I, I don't see why not. And next time I see him, well, even I can reach out to him and see if he'd be willing to come on. But that would be that would be hype. Like we just a million questions like why is it this way you know what I mean <laughs> grill him yeah but he had an answer like, under in, pressure in Pittsburgh last year he had an answer for every single question he's great so so I see how you feel under the lights yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, lights. yeah. Um, <laughs> the, two, the two little lights that are right here <laughs> but after after the Miami Open series we should do that we should we should expand try to do different things yeah and that's we were all already supposed to have Dustin on the racket customizer so um yeah, we'll do that for sure. And if that's something you guys are interested, I guess comment down below who you would like to see. And also what we learned about this is a lot of connections. So networking is important. So if you guys know people that you think we should have on, whatever, you can reach out to us, send us a DM on Instagram, send us an email, comment on our YouTube, video, or whatever. Yeah. We're very accessible. So um, you can message any one of us if you want someone on and we can make it happen. And we know that we have a few pros that... I don't know if they want to be named that watch the episodes as well. So shout out to them. Thank you for watching. Hopefully we can continue to do some good stuff for you all. So, and if you want to come on, obviously it's your one message away. So, um, some questions before we roll. Thoughts? I had a video. Oh, the, the, so we got a thing we try it. Basically we call it main cues, alternates. Basically it's oh, one, two, three. So we're going to give you different topics. We're going to have three things in that topic. We're going to rank them. And we're going to argue if we don't agree with each other's top three. So we're going to go California, Texas, Florida. Can I answer for both of us? I know what Evan's going to say. Evan, talk to me. <laughs> it was California, Texas, Florida. Yeah. Mains, alternate cues. Or just give me one, two, three. It's fine. One, two, three. Uh... California one. Yeah. Um, this is crazy. This part is crazy. Uh, I'll, I'll put Florida two. Thank you. Three. Wow. You? Okay, wait. This is to live or this is for what? I mean... Yeah, we're talking live right now. I got Florida one. Yeah. But can I afford it? Like, I, am I comfortable? <laughs> am I chilling? Or am I... Or like, you're on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Because if I could afford it, like California is two, Texas three. I'm not sure. I think California lifestyle is pretty cool, but it's the lifestyle you like. Expensive. Yeah, it's cool. I think it's cool, but it's expensive. I think California is nice. Like it's, it's too nice. It's a weird. It's a weird nice. <laughs> where like you know what I mean? Nice. Like this is real. You know what I mean? You know, when I land in California, I feel broke. I just, like, <laughs> like I am broke, but like I land there and I'm like, oh my goodness, like I I can't even afford to breathe. Yeah, but Florida is one for me for sure, and then. Cali, Texas. I also feel like, depending on where you go in California, the 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 people can be different. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the way they are is just different. I don't know if do I go to Texas than California. I mean, that also depends what part of like Texas you live, or what part of California. Like, I, mean, I haven't even been to all of the. Like, I've never been to actual like LA, LA. I've never mm -hmm. seen like a lot of. Like, I've been to San Diego. I've been to Malibu. So nice. And I've been to Irvine, Fountain Valley. When you're in a hill and you see the beach right yeah, there, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. where? <laughs> Yo. Am I in a, in, a, in, a, in a Picasso right now? Like a, like I had a housing. masterpiece? I had housing yeah. last year in Malibu. Shout out to the housing family in Malibu if you're watching. But, like, the side, I'm on the hill overlooking the ocean. Huge living room with just, like, a glass window, like, seeing the ocean. <sighs> Sure. I gotta go Cali too. Texas yeah. three. I love Texas though, yeah. but yeah, Texas What's crazy is you had to think between Florida, Florida and Florida, yeah. That's craziness. I mean, some of the cities in, That's in from you. Texas are fun, I guess, but we I like the Galveston. Beach. You know the Galveston tribe. Yeah, I said it depends where you live. <laughs> where's like, the future? Um oh, Harlingen. Harlingen. Oh no. <laughs> Harlingen's at like 150. Hollinger is the reason why Evan only wants to play Challenge League. <laughs> <in my future. laughs> All right. Next, we got pizza. 
Domino's, Pizza Hut, Papa John's. That's so tough. I, it changes all the time. I really can't answer that. Papa John's, one. I used to eat Papa John's for religiously in college. I think Papa John's is three for me. Three? Yeah. In the Bahamas, Pizza Hut was like a, a religion. I was going to play. <laughs> <laughs> I might got to go Pizza Hut, Domino's, Papa John's. Yeah, Damn. I can't answer this one. Let's like, I've been to Pizza Hut as a restaurant. Like, what? we've sat down Stop at Pizza that. Hut for dinner before no, in I'm, my lifetime. I think I've done that one. In my lifetime. We've oh, gone there. They bring it on a yeah. little. Yeah. And last one. Outback, Longhorn, Pause, Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> Roadhouse is warm. No, the Roadhouse is warm. Roadhouse, Roadhouse is roads. Warm. The roads are warm. Yes, and that's Roadhouse. what I But peanuts. It's a steakhouse, right. brother. It's the steak is not one. It's elite. The steak is not one. The steak it's is elite. three. The whole thing. The steak is three. The, the whole, whole experience. Yeah. <laughs> nah, hey, nah, nah. We're, <laughs> the whole experience. <laughs> um, what are the Outback and Longhorn? Yeah. Longhorn is three. No. Outback is two. I, have, I haven't been to Longhorn in a long time. I used to go to Outback a lot. That's where they have the Bloomin' Onion, right? Yeah. Yeah, we used to go there a lot. Thank you. It's not just about the steak. Uh, So it's a steak. Oh, okay, okay. Whose steak is the best? That's if you want to ask me that question. That's a different question. But the establishment as a whole, (laughs) Texas Roadhouse is elite. You go in there, they give you some peanuts. The bread is unbelievable. You do this. You eat the peanut. You do this. On the floor. (laughs) (laughs) Right on the floor. You're a pig. (laughs) (laughs) Is that how you were raised? Roadhouse. No, it was long. (laughs) Mom, I'm so sorry. They, um... Auntie G, mommy, no, they tell us to put it there, okay? <laughs> Throw it all on the ground. That is. Roadhouse is one. Give me a right here. For the establishment of the steak, however you look at Roadhouse, it. Roadhouse, Outback. Where would you rather eat? Roadhouse, Outback, Longhorn. I might have to go Outback, Roadhouse. Longhorn. Yeah. I I just haven't been to Longhorn that much. I we used to go to Outback there. so much. Brother X, I might have Longhorn one, Outback two, Roadhouse three, but that's me. Anyway, that the run- buns, the buns and cinnamon butter is elite, elite. But I go there for the steak, brother. Too good. You telling me you love a steakhouse because of the bread? It's part of it, bro. And it's not only the bread; it's the cinnamon. They have the store. worst steak of the th- of the three, but they have the best cinnamon butter bread. Run these five questions, okay, me, guys? <laughs> guys. Well, before we wrap up, Alex says while watching Alcaraz, Sinner, and Djokovic play, they tend to slide into an open stance backhand, or when they're chasing down a drop shot routinely. Is this the most efficient movement pattern? And if it is, why do you teach it? I think it's just it's just impossible. Oh, wait, run it. No, I was gonna say they said why would you teach it? This is from. I Why mean, would you teach got, it? This question came from, I'm assuming, the Franco episode. Where I think he said, and, and would you teach it? I don't think he said, why would you teach it? If it's the most efficient movement. Oh, if? Yeah. If it is, would you teach it? Yeah, I'm just saying, saying, like, uh, I think this came from the Franco episode to give context to people who haven't seen the Fran- Franco episode. He was saying that for Tommy Paul, they try to advise him not to slide yeah. if possible. Like on a hard court. On a hard court, yeah, yeah on a hard court. This yeah. is all about on a hard court. Yeah, what I would say is that you don't teach it. That is something that happens in in the heat of a point. So when you do fitness or you do, let's say, on court with your coach, the forward pattern that you train would be to either run through the ball and stop so you can recover, or you would get to the ball and then you would kind of do that, that step. You know what I mean? When you hit the ball, you cross and then you stop and you recover. But sometimes in a point, you're on the full sprint at a full stretch and you can see on the other side of the court that, you're, as I say, they can hit a volley to get to the drop shot or whatever. So there is no, there's no actual way to create the proper movement. And you have so much momentum going, the only way to stop would be to slide. So I don't think that's something that you try to do. It's just something that happens. And I don't think anyone teaches it. I think it's something that you just pick up through competition. I guess the things you have to think about when hitting, because this is on like the full run. You're not going to slide if you're not full run, right? I can barely even slide even when I am full run. So mm-hmm. like, it's about like you don't want to slow down too much before the ball because like your body weight going into the ball is is pretty important, and then you have to time it perfectly to where you can push off and get back in the other direction as fast as you can. And like Justin said, sometimes it's 
so stressed and so panicked that you don't have time. You just like get there, try to hit as best quality ball as you can. And then what happens, happens. And I feel it's a thing that you kind of develop as a junior. Like I remember sliding since I was like eight, nine years old. Like I think I think I first saw it from maybe someone like Morphis or whoever. But I think you become used to doing it. I think some people maybe do it too much and when it's not necessary. But I think that it's something that just kind of happens. It's something You don't want to do that. I think it's, it's not good for the body. And if you can arrive with a proper load and swing, you're probably going to hit a better shot too. So I don't think anybody wants to slide, especially at the highest level. I think it just happens. Yeah. And it, I mean, whenever you see Djokovic and Serena and these guys doing the open stance slide, and it's like, I believe that part of the reason for that is like, if you slide close stance, you don't really... There's no options for where you can hit the ball. Like you can't really pull the ball across if you're completely closed, at least with any good quality. So Do you when, know Evans you? <laughs> okay, okay, but Evans, you see Evans, it? Evans, <laughs> Evans is back at his wrist, like breaks this <laughs> way and then comes around and then goes this like Evans wrist is crazy. But normally like the open stance like gives you the option of like you can go, you know, different line cross. Yeah, exactly. And and maybe the opponent can't read it. And then also you're already on the outside leg. You know, if you stand, if you hit a close stance backhand on the run, then after you hit the shot, you probably have to come around with your other with leg. your other leg and come back. Because probably unless you unless, unless, <laughs> unless step backwards <laughs> or, or unless they turn the other way, like you know they slide yeah. close stance and then extremely inefficient. The way. Yeah, exactly. So that's also part of it is that when you slide on the on the left leg on the open stance backhand. You're already on the outside leg. You can push By the, back way, the other way. Yannick so. Sinner open starts back and it's ridiculous. Joke. He almost hits no weak balls in a point. Like no. he's on the full sprint, hitting the ball hard, and he's back in the court on the other side too. Yeah. I think it's incredible. Yeah. But then clay is obviously different because you're encouraged to slide into the ball on yeah. clay sometimes because you don't want to hit the ball and then the momentum takes you after because you can't just stop on a dime and turn. You're going to slide. Yeah, clay, it's much clay. more purposeful. Yeah. And you can use the slide to load. But on hard court, it's too much friction. Like, it's... Exactly. You just stop him. But yeah, good question still. Oh, and also something, Loki, that I, I don't know if people think about. It depends on the shoes. Like, for example, I was using K-Swiss for a little while, mm-hmm. and I feel like K-Swiss shoes are very tacky. And Wilson yeah. shoes are also very tacky. So I don't know. I haven't looked at... I haven't done research into what players actually slide that much, but like I know when I was using the case with shoes and when I was using uh, Wilson shoes back in the day, I remember it felt very grippy and you obviously you don't want to slide because if you slide, you can go over on an ankle. You okay. know what I mean? So like, I remember I was playing indoors against Kotzen in Michigan State a year and a half ago and I was using the case with shoes and I... I had some pretty bad back pain after the match and I thought that's part of the reason why because when I was using those shoes I played a very physical match and like it, if you don't slide and a lot to change direction and stuff it could be tough on the body like if, if the shoes are very grippy and mm-hmm. stuff so I think that depends on, on the shoes as well I don't know if that's my theory I don't know if people think about that at all but I've never worn those, those shoes so I can't tell you none. yeah um, okay next question and I think this is the last one is from Wallace can you discuss court time costs and training when you're not on tour um, what do you take into consideration when deciding a home base and I think he's just really concerned about court time and that sort of stuff do you pay for court time how do you find training partners um, how does that stuff work well when we train we do not pay for court time specifically we would pay our coach and whatever you pay a coach is between you and your coach. But I personally don't pay for court time. But at one point we had to sometimes if we use certain like local um, courts for whatever reason, whatever we didn't have courts at the time or whatever. And I think normally we would pay, maybe I think it was like $15, $20 for like an hour and a half. Yeah, I think... I don't know if Wallace is actually concerned about what we specifically <laughs> did, but I think he's asking for, for probably himself, you know? So I think it depends. What did he ask? He's asking about court time and training. Like, how do we go about that? He didn't that say stuff? at your home base? Yes, but I'm assuming. I'm answering his question or not? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Justin. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, you talk, talk bro. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is 
I'm assuming that he's asking because he's trying to learn for himself. You know, how like, we fifteen like, to twenty five bucks probably for like an hour and a half. But it depends. Like if okay, for example, Wallace, if you're in Florida, you don't have to pay for court time if you if you're willing to hustle. Like there were times where we would go to to public courts and just like hustle. Like sometimes you can go on this court time at public courts, you play for free, and then there are other times where you go and every court's full and they have to sit. In the public courts you normally you know? can't do like say ball feeding and stuff if yeah. somebody complains because it's supposed to be public, so it's supposed to be like for le- for leisure and not for I guess yeah. money. So yeah, so, with that. For, so for us, that's how it was at the beginning. Like a lot of the time, we would try and get, you know, when we moved here to Florida, that's what we would do. We would hustle with the, the public courts and that sort of stuff. And then recently, because our coaches were able to secure facilities, like Justin said, we don't have to pay for court time. Um, but in uh, in Texas, we used to a little bit. Like it depended on the time. Like, we were fortunate that the dents looked out for us, but mm. that was a business at a club that was pretty uh, strict with like. From this hour to this hour, this hour to this hour. So it was a lot more like scheduling, that sort of stuff that went in there. And then in terms of like um, training partners, like we practice with each other. So um, or our coaches set up for each other. And we have like a lot of juniors where we, where we play, like a lot of good juniors too. So we mix it up with them as well. And then where we live, also a lot of pros live or they travel through this area. So there's a lot of times that we can mix in with other players and stuff like that. So... I'm not sure where you live, but yeah, maybe try to figure out where the best players train or people in your kind of level train and you can probably find some partners that way. Yeah, I know they have like, they start to have these apps now, you know, like on um, on uh, UTR, there's like paid hits mm-hmm. and there's like other tennis apps that I've seen another app on Instagram. Oh, called, yeah. But we're not sponsored, so we're not going to promote. <laughs> <laughs> but... um. But if you are watching, <laughs> sponsor the sponsor for... and then we can send Wallace to use your app with our discount code, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much what we do. What we do here. Uh, did I miss any questions? Time cost training. I think that's pretty much everything. Home base. Yeah. And if you can't find anybody, bro, hit on a wall. Don't do that. No, for real. I grew up hitting on the wall. Sometimes for like for hours. You get better hit on the world for sure. When I said don't do that, I mean like do that. That's a joke, yeah, do that. <laughs> <laughs> I probably don't do that enough. The world don't miss. Yeah, that is true. If you hit it bad enough, the wall miss. <laughs> <laughs> no, you miss. Yeah. <laughs> or you can get one of those, uh, those, and I'm not gonna call a name because again, we're not sponsored. But those machine? Yeah, those ball machines are just like, oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you can do that too. We used to do that a lot in in Texas, actually. Like during COVID. Justin and I would go, and, and Evan too, maybe not as much as Justin and I, but we would go on two courts next to each other and just set the ball machines and just go for all. There were days where Justin would do that for like six to eight hours. Madness. Mistake. mistake Madness. Mistake. 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 Mad- <laughs> Especially when the injury started. <laughs> <laughs> error, 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 error. Yeah, how many forehands do you want to hit? You know, actually, when I put this computer on today, somehow I just saw old videos from that. I, from from like on the GoPro from back in Texas days, COVID days. So check I, it out. But yeah, that's everything that we have. Hopefully, we didn't miss any comments from from Instagram. Again, this was a kind of a last second episode. But um, if you are at the end of this video and watching, thanks for bearing with us. Next week, we have some exciting stuff coming your way. So look out for Instagram. I think that we're going to uh, advertise who we're going to have on. So you can send some questions for them. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. Thanks for a thousand. Thanks for supporting the the pro stringer and and the merch and we'll see you next week people mommy i sorry for cursing that happened again right. <laughs>